Thai is one of the toughest martial arts in the world. In Thailand, it's an obsession. And Muay Thai isn't only for adults. Children as young as seven are regularly paid to fight. Their matches draw huge crowds. Gambling on them is big business, but it comes at a price. This is Muay Thai country. Isan in the northeast produces more champions than anywhere else. It's also the poorest region in Thailand. Down this unlikely dirt road is one of the most highly regarded boxing camps in this area. And I'm going to go and meet some of the young fighters who train here. 11-year-old Nat Tanarak is one of the best child boxers in the region. So you obviously love Muay Thai. Why? Yeah. Nat plans on fighting all the way to boxing right. stardom in Bangkok. What would you do with all the money you earned? In one week, Nat will fight a 12-year-old champion from another province, the biggest fight of his career so far. If he wins, he'll be one step closer to his Bangkok dream. What do you know about the boy that you're going to fight? But not as good as you? Nat's father, Wachara, has come to rely on his son's earnings. He's involved in every aspect of his training. For the coming match, Nat needs to weigh in at 25 kilos. He and his opponent are fighting in the paperweight division. Nat is too heavy. Three kilos, six and a half pounds, is 10% of Nat's body weight. The rubber sweatsuit is designed to help Nat lose water. The thermometer is creeping towards 30 degrees, and Nat's got 8K to run. And in the get-up that he's wearing, it must be absolutely brutal to keep running. <laughs> Nat trains seven days a week, four hours a day, before and after school. Because of the big fight, it's even more intense than normal. He looks absolutely knackered. Are you worried about his health when he has to lose this much weight and he's working out so hard? Nat's also on a strict diet. will get a fee to take the upcoming fight, but his chance of earning big money comes from gambling. His whole village will club together to bet directly against the other side. If Nat wins, he'll get a cut. Do you know how much money's riding on this fight? In this region, 50,000 is more than the average person earns in a year. Nat's friends and family will be betting money they can't afford to lose. That's why he's training so hard. So it's worth it for the money? There are more than 30,000 professional child fighters in Thailand. They sometimes fight for as little as four pounds. Every Sunday, millions of families are glued to their TVs, watching their favourite champions clash. Ten. Oh. Nat bought his family this TV with the cash he's earned from boxing. The rest has gone on school books, clothes and food. Boxing. 
Nat's mother works as a nanny in Bangkok. She sends money home, but it's not much. Nat's dad doesn't have a job. Many parents in this region have to leave their families to find work elsewhere. Nat earns more if he wins a fight than his mum can send home in a month. What would happen if Nat said he didn't want to box anymore? So if he stopped boxing, he'd basically lose his dad. Oh. And have you ever got a sense that he kind of realises that it's down to him to, to help look after the family? I want to see just what Nat will be facing. Children in Thailand are allowed to fight professionally as long as they've got their parents' permission. The law says that they should wear protective gear, but this is widely disregarded. Fights are held every night of the week, so I head to a nearby village to watch Muay Thai. And this is where all eyes are going to be focused. There, right there on the boxing ring. There's going to be 22 battles, and they're expecting a crowd of thousands. First up are two eight-year-olds in the 20-kilo category, in Sedum versus JJ. <laughs> The fight is brutal. The kids batter each other with fists, feet, knees and elbows. Gamblers surround the ring. They like child fights because they're unpredictable. Although gambling is illegal in Thailand for most activities, special permits allow betting on professional tournaments like these. So the people raising their fingers, they're betting on this match. And there's big money riding on this. This is what fuels the <laughs> JJ knees in sedum in the groin. So the coach is thrown in the towel and that's the end of the match. Both fighters pick up their fees and gamblers settle their bets. How much money did you make? <laughs> it's the turn of two 13-year-old boys. Farmai versus Ying Mi Chai. It's a knockout. The refs called the, the end of the match. She looks really bad. It's a whole minute before Ying Mi Chai is helped out of the ring. He's not the only casualty of the evening. As the night wears on, I see several other children badly injured. So that was the last fight. I've got to say, that was so much more violent than I expected it to be. But the kids just take it in their stride. This is just a normal, typical night of Muay Thai. I want to find out about the effects of this sport on the young fighters' bodies. It's something being investigated in the capital, Bangkok. to Ramatibadi Hospital to meet a doctor who's heading up a groundbreaking study looking at the brains of child boxers. These are the scanner. Professor Jiraporn Lawathamatas runs the hospital's advanced imaging centre. She scanned the brains of 200 Muay Thai child fighters and tested their IQ, reasoning and reflexes. She compared them to 200 children from similar backgrounds who've never boxed. The initial results are startling. So all this uh, red, blue or green colour that you see are all abnormal area. So on a normal child's brain, there aren't any of these areas of no, damage? None of this area. The brain is still growing. So when you do some damage, the damage is much more than the brain of the adult. 
The brain damage is the result of repeated head trauma during fights. It's similar to what's seen in victims of road traffic accidents. What sort of damage would you anticipate to see in a child boxer once they've grown up? There might be some lower intelligence level compared to the normal, normal standard kids. Some dementia might happen. Someone just feel like they don't think well, don't feel well, but they don't know how to tell what's the difference to them. And it's actually this? Yes. yes. The research is in its early stages, but Professor Lawathamatos hopes it will inform government policy on Muay Thai in the future. Back in Isan, I talked to Nat's dad about the professor's findings. I asked him about the risks his son faces. Many people watching this would think that it's cruel to do this to a, a child. Wachara says his son's too young to understand the risk of brain damage. And for Nat, there are benefits to a sport that demands such dedication. The big fight is tomorrow. Nat and his father head to their local health clinic. They're going to check Nat's progress in losing weight. Nat is still three kilos above target. If Nat can't make it, the fight could be cancelled. So everyone's looking really upset and demoralised. He's supposed to be 25 by the weigh-in, which is 7am tomorrow. And from the looks on their faces, they're not quite sure how they're going to achieve that either. On the other side of town, the opposition arrives. 12-year-old veteran fighter, Nong M. These are the contenders, and they've traveled about seven hours to get here. And they're also staying in a really nice hotel. So obviously, they've got some money behind them. M started fighting when he was just seven years old. <laughs> His parents run a successful market stall, and although M's boxing money helps, it's only part of the family income. <laughs> Just like Nat, M's whole village have banded together to gamble 50,000 baht on him. Do you feel like the pressure's on for tomorrow? <laughs> It's 8 p.m. The weigh-in is less than 12 hours away. At Nat's camp, they're focused on one thing only, making him lose the weight. This seems pretty ridiculous. He's running along the side of a highway in the dark, wearing a sweatsuit, and you can see on his face that he's not enjoying it. Is there nowhere else we can run? <laughs> Nat missed school today. For the past 12 hours, he's been working out on an empty stomach. I catch up with Nat before he goes to bed. Do you think it's worth doing all this training? Why? If you didn't get money for Muay Thai, would you do it?
the day of the fight. Nat's arranged to meet his sponsor at this petrol station. Son Nong Kai is a boxing businessman. He helped arrange the fight and he put up the 5,000 baht guarantee that Nat will make his target weight. That's about 100 pounds. The time has come. I really hope he makes it. 26.6, more than one and a half kilos above target. They don't believe their eyes, so they weighed him three times. They don't want to believe the truth. But the bottom line is the match tonight might be in jeopardy. But Nat's sponsor, Son, isn't ready to give up on his investment. After 20 years in boxing, he knows all the weight loss tricks. Where I come from, you wouldn't be allowed to do this. Nat's father is starting to get worried. And as the minutes drag on, Son's methods get riskier. Dehydration has been linked to an increased risk of brain damage in contact sports like Muay Thai. In extreme cases, it can be fatal. I try reasoning with his sponsor. 5,000 baht can't be that much for you. Is it not just worth calling it quits and giving him more energy for tonight? Surely this isn't good for him. After 10 minutes, Nat is taken out. Three hours after they first arrived, Nat is weighed again. Incredibly, he's 26.6. He hasn't even lost 100 grams. But Nat refuses to continue. It looks like he's going to have to forfeit the match. Now it's his opponent, Nong M's turn. Twenty-five point five, half a kilo overweight. <laughs> to everybody's surprise, he's also failed. It means Nat no longer has to forfeit the fight. And with so much gambling money at stake, the two camps cut a new deal to let the fight go ahead. So Son gets to keep his money. I just don't understand why it took them so long. If they decided earlier, they could have saved that little boy hours of torment. It's a relief to see Nat eat and drink at last. He seems to have taken it all in his stride. He's just took it away quite contentedly. Hopefully it'll give him the energy he needs for tonight. How's it taste? People have traveled miles to watch tonight's big money fights. Who are you here to see? As the kids are oiled, massaged, and prepared for the bout, the adults around them tend to the business side. Every couple of minutes, a relative or a friend from the village comes up here to where Nat and his dad are, are waiting, and suddenly there's a massive wad of money in Nat's dad's hands. Soon, both sides bring the cash to the table. The winning side will take everything. Honor, glory, and 100,000 baht. It's time. Nong M is in red. Nat is in blue. M is scoring points with strong and accurate strikes.
Nong M knees hard into Nat's gut, one of the most powerful and painful strikes in Muay Thai. There's only one more round to go. The match is really close, it's going to come down to points. No one knows he's going to win. M is ahead by two points. If Nat comes back strong, he could still win it. Nat suddenly looks very powerful. One minute to go. Nat scores with a good kick. And it's over. The judges submit their scores. And they declare the winner. Nat has lost. I think he did really well. It was a close fight. I arranged to meet Nat's sponsor, Son, the next day. I want to know if he feels responsible for Nat losing. The process that you put him through that morning of the weigh-in, that couldn't have been good for him. Do you think that talented child boxers are being exploited by people in your business? คือเอ่อคิดว่ามันเป็นโรงเงินเอ่อยอดเป็นเอ่อส่งเสริมเป็นกีฬามวยไทยมากกว่าครับคือเอ่อทุนการศึกษาของเด็กดีกว่าครับ